Hey, what's up everyone? It's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. In this video we are going to be talking about many-to-many -many relationships. In the previous two videos we talked about one-to-one -one relationships and one-to-many relationships. And the example we used was a blogging website. We had a users table and a blogs table and the blogs table referenced the users table. That is how we allowed multiple blogs to be written by one person. In that situation though, a blog could only be authored by one person. So you could kind of draw it like this. User has a one-to-many with blog. Blog is on the many side. What if we wanted to alter this app though so that a blog could have many users? Then it would look like this. The way we did it without the many side for the user is we had the blog table reference the user. Well, if we wanted to do the many side on this side, all we would have to do, right, is have the user table reference the blog table. But then there's a problem, because now we have a table referencing another table, and it gets really messy. For example, if this is the table, and let's say we just have different rows in these tables. Each line we can say is a user, and each line we could say is a blog. So this one user could have wrote numerous blogs. And this user could have wrote numerous blogs. And then you could also think of it the other way. This blog was written by this user and that user. So as you can see, it just kind of gets messy when we start working with a lot of data. The solution to this is to break this many-to-many -many relationship into two one-to-many relationships. So then what we are going to have is the users table with a one-to-many, and the blogs table with a one-to-many. But how do these connect? Well, we're actually going to have another table inside of here to fix this conflict. Imagine that this disorganization is a conflict and we need someone to kind of break in and separate the uh, fighting entities. <laughs> so we are going to name this user blogs. By convention, I'm having the first one singular and the second one plural. It will look something like this. This table is known as an intermediary table or a junction table. Essentially what this table does is it records the associations between the users and the blogs. So anytime a user has a blog, it's going to be listed in this table. So let's put some simple data in here. Let's say we have a few users and we have a few blogs over here. And we'll just write some IDs, let's say six, seven, and we'll have another person down here. So these are the three users inside of the users table. And we'll have three blogs over here too. And we'll give them all IDs. Now anytime there is a user authoring a blog, that association is going to go in this user's blog table. So let's say this guy right here, he authored these two blogs. All we would have to do is for every blog he's associated with, is create a row. The columns in here are going to be the IDs. So we could say six, seven, and then we have another row, six, 12. And that shows the combination of this user with these two blogs. If you want to reverse the thinking a little bit and say blog users, you could do that too. But in this situation, it's not quite as clear. That's because on the application, a user creates a blog. It's not so much the other way where a blog creates a user. That's why I decided to put users first, but if you wanted, you could flip these tables and do it the other way. You could say blog authors, for example, and you would have blogs and then the users table over here. Any way you want to design it is fine as long as there's only two one-to-many relationships. In this situation, we have a one-to-many this way and a one-to-many this way. That's because we have only one six here, but we can have as many sixes as we want here. Same for this side, we can have the blog seven one time here, but we can have as many references to blog seven as we want here. So for example, this lady could work on the blog with the ID of seven, and now we have two references to the blog with the ID of seven. So that is your introduction to intermediary tables and designing many-to-many -many relationships. You are always going to want to break many-to-many -many relationships up into one-to-many relationships. Hopefully that is all clear for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you're enjoying this content, please click like, subscribe. What's coming up next? Well, I think I'm going to do an overview of all of this. Not to be redundant, but just to kind of 
wrap it all together and express the three different ways to design tables. And that will just kind of make it more concrete in our minds before we move on. So thanks guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.